To protect society from the extremes of the video makers, new laws came into being. The Video Recordings Act came into effect on the 1st of September 1985. Now this was headed up by a very interesting person at the time, who was James Furman. He set a standard for society which people appreciate. It's controversial, obviously. You would have horror movies that with gaping holes. We are the most conservative censorship body of any of the major Western countries. We are the only moment, country David, in the Western world there, that has this later. draconian censorship and it's a disgrace to this country and it should have been changed years ago. I would like to talk about censorship at length later. Start tonight with the finger that points at videos like this. Did it and other video nasties play a part in the killing of little James Bulger? The news hit the headlines that a judge had blamed the video industry. And of course it led to that very, very famous headline, burn your video nasty for the sake of our children. That is probably why primarily the horror black market started because the BBFC was just cutting so much. It stimulated creativity and social networking. There was this major network, and a lot of the information came from um, fanzine press. I think anyone that did a fanzine was saying, fuck you, after the video nasties. There was a thing where it was very clandestine, you know, it was like getting hold of drugs or something. It's illegal, isn't it, so? <laughs> You'd be sweating. You'd feel like a, you know, a drugs courier with a couple of horror films. It was crazy. People were being arrested and being put into prison just for having a copy of um, some dodgy video. I don't think you can really explain the shock when it really happens. Some argue banning films has fostered the illicit trade. Others say the law is not working. And the back will come. The video nasties, all the violence and the filth in and my very modest measure seeks to sort out those like Child's Play 3, which contains graphic and gratuitous scenes which should not be available in anybody's home. He was genuinely of the view that unless you banned these things, then society would actually collapse. It was that apocalyptic. The government has proposed strict new laws to control the sale and rental of violent videos to protect children. His proposed amendment to the Video Recordings Act would have effectively banned anything that was not suitable for children. Well, this will have to be cut. The Director of Public Prosecutions decided that the only feasible way to deal with the video nasties was using the Obscene Publications Act and he divided them up into a list of titles that he felt were so obscene that they would be the kind of titles a jury might find obscene in a court, Section 2 titles, but also he had another secondary list of titles where he was perhaps not confident that a jury would find against them, and so those titles he added to a second list of uh, so-called Section 3 videos. But that would mean that that film always had this tarnished image and this sort of aura around it of being unacceptable. But that's where the beauty ends and the nightmare begins. They'll scare the living daylights out of you. You'll run from the theater in fright. It'll put you into deep shock. <laughs> to avoid moral panic, keep repeating. They, they were, were only movies. They, they were, were only movies. movies. What's the one film that most people think is on the original 72 video nasty list, but actually isn't? Well, it's Harry Bromley Davenport's Extro. So I was actually on the set of this movie and saw the alien, which was really a mime artist bent over backwards. I thought that was pretty obvious. 